world of YouTube, Tiffles, ain't it? <clears throat> what a great night to talk about ghosts. Although this story I'm going to speak of is uh, maybe not about ghosts, but it sure does remind me of some ghosts. But um, it is all in all a creepy story. Mind you, it happened back in 1973, the summer before I was born. And this guy uh, who tells the story, I guess, never told no one because, of course, back in the day, if you were to <clears throat> say stuff like this, but I think he came out with this in the mid-1990s, but I think they would have still probably <laughs> accused them of something or who knows put him in the nut house. But I guess these two best friends went to a summer camp or Boy Scout camp. I believe it happened in, um, it was out Midwest. One of the kids' name was uh, Dakota. Um, If you're reading this, uh, this guy, I mean, went to this place like four or five times before he stopped it completely. Um, but what had happened was they were camping out, you know, sharing a tent. And I guess, um, I don't know why they got this. It's me, Dakota. It's Jake. Um, whatever the case may be. I believe them were the two boys named Dakota and Jake. Um, I believe Dakota is the boy that went missing. And I want to say this happened in Utah. And I'll tell you something right now. If that happened, if it is Utah, if it is out Midwest, this will explain a lot of this story, but it also could be something supernatural, so, you know, you never know. But due to the fact that the boy, as a man now, came out of the woods all hairy, the guy said, you're not looking normal, right? Of course, living out in the woods that long, who wouldn't come out hairy of mountains? But the story goes is that he was camping out. It was late at night. They all went to bed. And, well, I guess the coat had to get up and take a leak outside the tent. Of course, back then, you know, even now, tents don't have bathrooms. So he had to get up and go outside. And supposed to be his friend just went right back to sleep and went right out. I mean, hey, it is something that... um. You know, some kids would probably do because, of course, you know, being out in the wilderness and camping, right? Just back in them times, boy, you did a lot, you know, a lot to get your energy worn out back then, unlike today. Sucks to say, you know, back then, kids like me could wander and um, <laughs> not have to worry about, you know, well, we did have to worry about predators and sex offenders, but... We pretty much learned our independence from just wandering out the streets by yourself. But supposedly the kid I went to go pee and when he woke, the other kid woke up the next morning, of course, kid number was in the tent. <laughs> and that's the most heart-stopping, you know, craziest thing that can ever fucking happen. And it's just sad. So, of course, there was a big search. They um, went out looking for him and did everything possible to search for him. And when time went on, it was, you know, time to call it quits. Presumed dead. 
this guy had said, you know, hey, <laughs> um, he's gonna go visit. I, I'm sure if he didn't have this encounter, I think he would have gone back to this place. But what had happened too, the day before he went missing, they were out fishing, caught half a dozen fish. And I mean, of course, this guy in memory of his friend, right, returned to this place like four or five times and you know, enjoying himself. And like I said, after this story, he never went back. And um, as you read this, as you can see, um, as he could mun mun muster up the words to speak, I said, well, where have you been all these years? You know, and it goes into this. Jake's next words will haunt me until the day I die. All right, Jake is the one who we're missing. And I think about, you know, them almost daily. Of course, who is gonna... <laughs> ever forget something like this, but the kid goes on to say, you know, I was taken, and um, all he says is, you know, <laughs> you must leave now. They're watching you. Leave now. So, I mean, the guy abruptly got up, right, took off, never went back, will never go back, and I don't know, furthermore, if anybody, you know, you know, um, let me say this, damn it. You know, authority-wise went searching for this kid or man now. But as creepy as it is, you know, or what even the hell had him captive? I mean, if it was Bigfoot let alone being in Utah, you know, the spiritual world of the Native Americans. You know, only <laughs> time will tell. But, um, I mean, this guy also says, right, you can believe it or not. He don't care. He says the things I say. He knows what he saw. He knows what he heard. And, right, why would someone make up a story like this? But, um, of course, tonight, I uh, uploaded two short videos. Check them out. Spirit speaking. And due to the fact that, not last night, but the night before, I set up the camera and got nothing. <clears throat> and the night before that, I set up the camera. My wife heard talking in the room. Well, wouldn't you know, I've caught the voice, or voices, two voices, two distinct. I mean, one, to me, sounds like a girl. And that's the first video I put up, and the second one sounds like a man, of course, but my wife says, it sounds like a man for the first one. But um, whatever, I mean, there's a voice there, and it clearly says two words, clear as day. I mean, just as clear as the day I was in Corning, New York, and Spirit said, let me out. <laughs> yeah, that's right. But um, things of the supernatural, things that, you know, like the kid here, and for, for missing for many years, and then pops out of reality or out of a friggin', you know, maybe even a porthole. Who knows whatever snatched him up that night. Or even if he was dead and in spirit. It all leads down to that one thing, boy. You know, there's things out there, there's all kinds of portholes and or vortexes and, you know, landlines. I don't know if something followed me home or I have a landline in my house and it's somehow just got broken open. But whatever the case may be, <laughs> there's so much stuff, mysterious stuff, that people don't even realize it's sitting right in front of their face. 
And I mean, it's the people that just, you know, if you're not going to believe, it ain't going to come forth to you, of course. I mean, that's only proven. That's why you got half, you know, the population of the world, you know, all skeptics. But until you have that experience, and there have been skeptics out there that literally, oops, <laughs> I was wrong. Yeah, that's right. Change their story and their thoughts. You know, you ain't gonna believe in nothing until you have the experience. And of course, I want to say and get excited for people to go and try this. But then again, I don't want people to go and try it. I mean, you got to let it happen natural. Because if you do do go something, go do something, and it's a bad experience, or you open up the wrong door, then yeah, that's right, you're screwed. You can get possessed. You can get um, poltergeist. It's not nice. So I mean, yeah, you should leave it all to the professionals. And you should believe when someone like moi puts up a video, because this ain't no joke. <laughs> I'm telling you, I, I seen something yesterday morning, like I said, my, looked like my son. But it wasn't, and he walked in the kitchen behind me, or whatever it was. And I'm sitting there talking to it. <laughs> Hell, if you want to get your hand checked out, you better get ready, as we'll be leaving after nine, right? <laughs> and then when I went to think, what the hell did I just see? And the thing was, you couldn't hear no footsteps. And usually my son would grunt at me or say something stupid, but I just thought he just went on about his business, but that ain't what it was. He literally, that whatever that was, literally made itself known and then disappeared. But literally, I got something last night, and the damn thing wanted to get crafty the other night and shut my freaking camera off. Because I did the same thing last night, and I know damn well I was seeing them numbers moving. The blue light blinks. And when I got up the next morning, there was nothing. Nothing. So, you know, with that being said, in this story here, you know, whether it's supernatural, whether it's real, I mean, there's things out there that people just need to really stop believing in, because... It doesn't matter if it's, <laughs> but, but you know what I'm starting to believe is this Bigfoot may be a Native American um, creature too, made by the natives. Because every time you hear one of a Bigfoot story, more or less, you know, <clears throat> Native American story, they're always somehow entwined with each other. Something they live natives lived here. Bigfoot lived over there right not too far. These are the things that you need to really look for, watch for, and also be careful for. Because if you ain't got a hand on the spirit world, it will go after you. So I'm only glad that I'm catching stuff so I can bring forth. Because like I say, I'm... It kind of irks and pisses me off that I got to, as you see this TV right here, when I get my stuff, I put my footage on the TV, I have to turn the volume way up, and then I record, and that voice came out nice and good too. But, you know, you hear all the distortion, it ain't no diff more different than a white box, or the white noise box. That, oh my God, I can't stand them things when they're on, you know, the ghost adventures or ghost hunting shows. Because all you hear, and all the static, and it's just annoying. I mean, don't get me wrong, they do get there. So this is no different than that. And there's some other things on that video, but I cannot, um... I cannot record it off if it's too faint, but it's there, and it's more talking, and it's like music playing. But I literally need to get that downloaded from the camera, and I have not got a computer yet for that. So I will be trying to work on this to cut my video short, to, um, you know, not the 
not to do the old, you know, editing bullshit. Only editing to cut it down so, right, I can just get it up in like a short video. So I'm not tampering and people say, oh, you're, you're fake. No, 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 no. Sorry, folks. There's no fake here. There's no lying here. And there's definitely no storytelling here, even though I do tell stories. But, um, they're all the truth. All the freaking truth. And if you can't go about listening to my stuff and go about thinking it's all fake, well, you're wrong. You're dead wrong. Because I'm an advocate for the dead. And it's only getting heated up, baby. Oh, is it? I don't know what it is. I I assume I have opened something and... Oh, man. Just to think it happened on the year, 50 years ago that I was born. 50 years it took to open up that door that I had when I was four years old and didn't understand I mean, don't get me wrong, I've been getting a lot of ghost activity through life, but to catch it now, of course, because I didn't have the equipment back then, I mean, don't get me wrong, I kind of lost re with reality, with drinking, it was stupidity, but I got out of my funk, and now that I've gotten out of my funk, as you can see, things are happening, and if I would have known this years ago, I would have stopped my drinking, and I could have obviously got more done and recorded because I do have an older camera you know that I did have and I could have and I actually caught something on a camera I can't even say I didn't catch nothing on that camera because when I brought my son to the park man in Air Mass um, a place where I used to go to school page school literally my camera malfunctioned in there and that was a camera from the um I think I bought it in like uh, 2001, just the year before I went to jail. <laughs> but I caught a lot of stuff before I went to jail with my kids. And I got to start pulling some off and recording them and putting them up. You know, just the old times. Because I want to have them for when I pass away onto them, onto their kids, if they ever have them or whatever. And, but there is some funny stuff on there I have. <laughs> but that cameraman caught something that day in air, and I freaking tell you, I forgot I had that. <laughs> I mean, I, I've i needed the equipment. I had it, but I was back and then I wasn't even thinking of taking that camera and ghost hunting with it. And now I might just take that to the whole, I mean, to the garden, the mansion too. I mean, the, the thing I have to have it on the power cord to record, but I should be able to catch something off that nice. But I got to get it prepared. I got to um, get it. I think I have a blank tape, but I need to get it prepared. So look into that. Maybe I'll set that up this in this house. I don't know, folks, whatever the case may be. Enjoy my videos. Enjoy being here and terrible sight because I tell you things are starting to open up around here folks so don't go away don't touch that dial you might miss something and if it's got to do a ghost all oh, you're gonna believe be safe take care and always believe especially being on my channel baby terrible sight what I catch Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The macho man ghosted. Ooh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Ow.